Welcome to the uh, exam review for your last uh, exam. Um, so basically just two chapters. There's going to be a, a bunch of multiple choice and some short answer and definitely some mathematical Hardy Weinbergs, which I will talk about a little bit later in this video. So uh, obviously going down the list, uh, polymorphic and uh, monomorphic traits, fairly straightforward. Hardy Weinberg equilibrium, I'm going to save for about five minutes from now when I go over that. Um, we're definitely moving on. Um, you want to know examples of things that cause genetic drift. Um, these are actually relatively interesting things here. Um, as far as, uh, you know, bottlenecking, uh, founder effect when you have some organism leave or small number of organisms leave a particular area and move somewhere else, where almost all of them die, and a few survive and they have different traits that repopulate, etc. So uh, be aware of those as far as selections, be able to identify them based on description and or a chart. Uh, single nucleotide polymorphism, DNA fingerprinting, very straightforward things. Um, this exam is pretty straightforward um, down the line. Uh, definitely phylogenetic trees, you want to pay attention to the UPGMA method um, of how we do phylogeny. And with cladistics, a big fancy word, um, understand cladograms and the relationships between organisms uh, using those. So that it's pretty straightforward. Let me show you a couple exam questions. So let's give you uh, a relatively easy one. I'm even gonna give you the answer on this, but some are as fundamental as a definition like this. You know, in humans, the gene for eye color is an example of obviously a polymorphic trait. Um, there's way more than one version and more than one gene uh, that has to do with your uh, eye color. So if you ever had your high school teachers do pun and squares with human eye color of blue and uh, and brown, that is not correct. All right, moving on. One version or way of uh, asking you about uh, the different types of selection. So, uh, you know, you knowing an example of leading to two distinct phenotypes, so basically almost two bell curves with a hump in the, with a very low trough in the middle um, would be what particular kind. This is another good question, semi-related to Hardy-Weinberg, um, but also understanding allele frequencies and fitness values. Uh, so this is, uh, you wanna know this, you may see a few more like this one. And uh, this would be one of the examples uh, using the uh, UPGMA method for uh, identifying percentage of nucleotide differences uh, in uh, organisms. So uh, that is what you see. I don't care that you see it now. Um, you have time to work on it. Um, I'm also going to now move to the Hardy-Weinberg questions just to kind of have give you a better sense of what you're going to see with that. Tackle this uh, question, which is a good exemplar uh, for Hardy-Weinberg. And so basically, Hardy-Weinberg has to do with changes in the allele frequency, which can indicate um, a lot of different things. But over time, it can ind indicate some degree of uh, evolving or evolution of the species. But this part is more so figuring out the allele frequencies in the population. So here we have 1,000 individuals in a population of birds. 886 have a red tail, 114 have a yellow tail. And so a question would basically be, what would be the allele frequencies um, of this population? So for example, if we make like uh, you know red tail, obviously R is gonna be the allele for red tail, right? And R is going to be the allele for yellow tail. Uh, and again, we're using the same letter because it's the same gene. It's the tail color. Um, so we want to figure out what the what the range, like what's the allele frequency. But we also want to be able to figure out what's the relative percentage in the population of individuals that are this, that are this, and that are this. And as you know, these two are going to be red. So we're not going to be able to tell them apart. This one's going to be yellow. So how do we do this? Uh, pretty straightforward. So the only thing we know, you know what, what's the only genotype that we absolutely can determine out of these three in terms of the allele frequency? And it's this guy. Because the only way to get yellow is little r and little r. And so we know that basically 114 out of 1,000 of these individuals uh, are uh, homozygous recessive. So we know like, you know, once we throw that into a calculator, we're going to get 11.4%, which would be written as 0. Uh, 0.114. So that's basically RR. And so I usually do kind of a, a, a very kind of generic um, formula that always works. 
Um, so in any given population with Hardy Weinberg, there's always what's called P and Q, and you'll read about this in your book and you'll see it on the other ones. But generally, P is always what we typically would make one of the uh, alleles, which we'll just make the larger one. And Q tends to be the other one. And so what we know is in a population, P plus Q equals one. And what I mean by that is 100% of the population. So if you were to literally have, um, you know, all the big R's and little R's and put them into piles. So basically say, okay, everybody, like here's a basket. And you're going to go to all of your, um, all of your birds and you're going to go to their genes, which would be impossible to do and say, all right, put all of your big R's in this pile and put all of your little R's in this pile. So if an organism is, uh, you know, yellow, it's going to put both of its little R's in here. And if an organism is heterozygous, it's going to put one of its big R's in here and one of its little R's in here. And if an organism is homozygous, dominant, it's going to put both of its big R's in here. And so this pile is going to build up, right? And that basically is what the alleles are. The alleles are just the big R's and the little R's. And some organisms have little ones and some have big ones and some have both. So basically this is what we're saying is P plus Q is equal to 100% of the population, just like big R plus little R equals 100% of the population. That's just the individual letter. So the thing is, though, is organisms, obviously, in this case, um, are uh, diploid. So basically, they have two versions, right? Uh, they either have two letters. So basically, when this is squared, and we you do old school FOIL for math, you get basically P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 100% of the population. And this, by the way, just so you know, is the big R. This whole value here, it just doesn't matter, it says 2PQ, that's fine, that's the heterozygote. And then the Q squared is going to be the little r. So also in the population, right, all of this plus all this plus all this equals that. So we can use this information um, to figure out these values. This is really what we're looking for. And we're also looking for the percentage of the R and the, the big R and the little R. So what do we know from this so far? What we know right now is we know this particular part right here. We know that the little R is 0.114, right? Uh, that we know. And we're going to be ending this uh, by filling out what these other two are. So what we know right now is RR equals 0.114. That's also, by the way, Q squared. It's the same thing, as you can see here. So if we take the Hardy-Weinberg part, if we know that Q squared is equal to 0.114, we can basically do this. We can do Q squared, which I'll we'll always have, to find Q, to then find P, to then find P squared, to then take the difference of all that to find the 2PQ. And you're like, what the hell is he talking about? Well, I'm going to show you in a second. So if we know mathematically that Q squared is equal to 1.4, or 0.144, and you can do this on your own, pause the video, what mathematically would Q be? All right? So if you haven't done this type of math in a long time, basically the way to get rid of Q squared would be to take the square root of both sides, and change it to a Q, so that becomes a Q. And then you do the square root of 0.114, and you get 0.3. Three seven. Now this goes on and on. We'll call it 0.337. I'm not going to go crazy if you're you know off by a little bit. So now we know something. So now that we know up here that Q squared is 0.114, we now know that Q is 0.337. As you know from before, right? P plus Q equals 1, right? So P plus, we now know Q is 0.337 equals 1, we can then solve for P. And so you can go ahead and solve for P uh, to figure that part out. And you should get 0.663. So now if P is 0.663, you can easily find P squared, right, by just squaring the regular P. And from that, an answer of 0.439. So P squared is going to be um, 0.439. So there we go now with that, 0.439. So we found out from all the way over here that 
obviously p squared is also equal to big R big R. So that value is going to be 0.439. So basically 43.9% of the population is big R big R. Now we don't need to do any two keep or two PQ in the middle. We just need to take the difference of all these from one. So basically you're going to do like 0.439 plus 0.114, right? And then basically get that answer, which is very fundamental. And you're going to get 0.553. And then when you subtract that from one, one minus 0.553, you're going to get 0.446. So this is now 0.446. And so what we see here is that we have literally everything that we need. Um, and it's all boxed in right here. So a question that would be asked would be, what would the allele frequency be for both of these alleles? And your answer would be, well, okay, that makes sense. Uh, the P allele is 0.663, which means in the buckets, 66.3 uh, of all of the alleles are the big R's in this bucket. Um, and the Q ones obviously are going to be the opposite, 33.7. Uh, percent of the total big R's and little R's are in this bucket. But that's not what organisms have. Organisms are diploid in this case, so they have two. And that's why we had to use this math right here. So then what do we get? I might also ask you, uh, okay, so uh, what percent of this population is homozygous dominant? Um, and you would say 43.9%. Uh, what percent is heterozygous? 44.6. What percent is homozygous recessive? 0.114. Now, you add all these numbers up, you're probably going to get 0.99999. That's close enough, okay? Because this math depends on how many significant digits you go to. Um, so this is how you would do all of the different versions of what I might ask you. Um, and so I highly suggest uh, watching the uh, Hardy-Weinberg videos first um, before, obviously, uh, well, actually, if you got this far in the video, you probably just didn't do it either way. But make sure you go check out my puzzles uh, on uh, Hardy Weinberg as well as the PowerPoint. And uh, good luck, and I will see you for the exam.